Hey guys, Dr. Eric Smith, Fit for Life Doc, and I'm down here in Miami with one of my favorite OG fitness, physique, competitor friends, incredible photographer, Anton. Uh, he's down in Miami and he's got some got some issues going on. So tell me a little bit about what you, like we've treated you before, um, and now we're like in the office, but yeah. so what's been going on It's got worse? Uh, so 2012, I herniated a disc, um, L5-S1 herniation and since then it's been manageable I've been stretching uh, doing you know cold plunges everything to kind of keep the inflammation at bay to keep the injury at bay and still train through it uh, over time though wear and tear and everything it just you know naturally just has gotten a little bit worse and lately probably about six months ago maybe due to traveling and sitting in airplanes for long periods of time uh, I started getting the uh, uh, hip immobility, you know, so yeah. it started like my left side of my lower back started getting jammed going into my upper glute and then uh, then I started feeling a sensation going down my leg, which kind of ended at my knee, so um, I wasn't exactly sure what that is. I went to a doctor, we did the MRI and uh, I had an epidural shot, which didn't help. So now I'm here hoping that you can solve this riddle. Yeah, so the MRI, it showed that he has a disc bulge. So a disc bulge, there's three different levels of kind of problems with disc. It's gonna be a bulge, which is a small, um, uh, kind of the donut that's compressed and the donut's starting to come away from the bone. But a lot of people in about 60% of the population typically have a uh, disc bulge at any time. It doesn't mean it's problematic, but in this case it could be, but I'm gonna talk a little bit more about what I think it is that's actually uh, making the disc bulge secondary and creating the big problem. Next one is a herniation. Some people, when I hear herniation, it's actually the jelly is out of the donut, but it's still attached to the donut. And the final one's sequestration. So sequestration means the jelly's out of the donut, searing pain, like do not pass, go, go directly probably to the hospital, and you're gonna wanna get surgery. But today, we're gonna continue working on him because he has had history of piriformis syndrome, which is what I think is going on and actually really where the majority of the pain is. And then it's also complicated because he does have probably some more exacerbation on the disc because with that pain, I'm sure he's walking a little bit differently, trying to do some things. But I mean, you can tell by the man's physique, he's been working out. So today we're gonna get into um, where I'm gonna use this table to open the disc up, um, just kind of stretch it, get some flexibility in there, adjust the man, because I know that he also has upper back and shoulder issues, some things like that. But we're gonna focus mainly on that and then we can just um, kind of go from there. So. Any questions before we get into it? No. Let's okay, do it. let's get your face down. This started to bother you more and it suddenly happened with the calf that you had yeah. the weakness, right? Mm -hmm. But we know historically you've had this problem back here in your piriformis. So what I think is going on is you have a bulge, but because you got the epidural and it didn't give you a lot of help, yeah. that the, actually this is the secondary problem and probably something that's just been there. Uh -huh. So even though you got an MRI, this isn't the, the biggest issue, right. but I would bet like, yeah getting in here yep. is probably more of your biggest issue, right? Yep. So before when I was treating you, the main thing, the reason why I was treating you for that because the majority of the pain would stay above the knee. Right. So a hallmark sign of piriformis syndrome versus a disc issue uh -huh. is that the pain doesn't go past the knee. Yeah. And you didn't have that problem before. No. So that's why I'm thinking like somehow we've just strangled off the L5 disc a little bit more. Yeah. And that it's enough that it looks like, oh my gosh. Yeah. But if your ball, if the it was just the bulge, and that's what I'll look at your disc to confirm as well, mm -hmm. beside the radiologist and the MD, then this is just what we need to work on. So there's some muscular stuff, or you can also get trigger point therapy, or you can have people do dry needling. Dry needling, can you recommend somebody? Yeah. Uh, like, I would get it today. Yeah, like, because I think dry needling is gonna be something to add on for sure. Yeah. Well, some of the bigger things that I'm feeling around for is here is just feeling the mobility in your spine. Your erector muscles are actually a little bit more hypertonic on the left side. So he's having the pain down his left side and he's having an inability of actually like lifting up and doing a calf raise on his left side. So that's more indicative of like an L5 issue. That's why I have small calves. I'm <laughs> yeah. So, um, but in a way, like that's also helpful to understand what nerves being impinged. It does not take a lot of weight to actually impinge a nerve, but as chiropractors, what we're doing is releasing tension on the nerves so the body can work optimally to heal itself. So we don't particularly heal everything. Healing comes from your body, your mindset, your nutrition, your hydration levels, and all the big points that you're 
you're working with. So a lot of pressure down in here. And this is why I'm glad you came in the office so we can actually uh, mm -hmm. do some more stretching in there. Have you ever had this done? Yeah. And I had it done with a, with a doctor who was like, did it so mildly that it didn't really, I didn't feel anything. Like he was afraid of actually, you know, hurting me or liability or whatever. Oh yeah. And then I had this one guy who was extreme, like the complete end of the other spectrum, where he just didn't care. Just, just leaned on like, you and just pushed you. Yeah, up. like old school guy from Odessa. He was just <laughs> like, okay. He looked, he read the iris in my eye. And uh, I didn't have to tell him where it hurts. He just looked at it and goes, okay, lay down. And just started working on it. It was wow. crazy. Wow. I didn't read the iris in your eye. Maybe the little twitch in your eye if I had pain in my left side. But that's about it. When you, when you push down on that, like the L5S1, mm -hmm. like, kind of hurts. So is it painful when I push in? No, when, I when, you, when you push down a little higher. Like if you're on my back, yeah, right there. Yeah. Where your hand is, that's big. Good. So what this does in terms of getting the disc and the, the bulge back, what we're doing is just getting flexibility because so we're pulling the joints apart similar to like right now, he's laying face down, so gravity is pushing this way versus this way. When you sit up, stand up, gravity's gonna push down on your body and it's gonna compress the disc versus when we sleep especially if somebody wants to stretch their discs out. I'd normally have them put something underneath their stomach or lay across a, um, like a Swiss ball and then breathe through their belly button like as deep as they can because that's gonna force these things to open up. And know I'm just doing it manually today. So if you ever wonder about this technique, you see a lot in my videos, but I basically manually push the um, spinous process, so the bone on the back of the body up, and then I manually decompress the discs by just going back and forth. And when I feel a restriction, I stay in there a little bit longer and then push a little bit more. So um, as I had somewhat mentioned there too, there we go. With him, um, he has a couple different things going on. So we have the, the disc that we know is a ball just from the imaging. And then we also are trying to, um, get his piriformis loosened up. So we wanna work on a few things with here. What the piriformis muscle does is it is an external rotator of the hip. So it takes the hip out like that. It attaches right in the hip. So a lot of you that have hip problems and think it's right here and saying like, oh my God, I got a bad hip. And you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s. That's not the case unless you were a marathon runner, ultra runner, something like that. Uh, but what it does is it attaches here and then goes onto the front part of the sacrum. So the sacrum is this bone here, it goes across here also known as your tailbone in the bottom part, but it's this deeper, deeper muscle underneath this glute. So yep. you probably can't tell, but right now it's like I'm strumming a guitar string. It's just so deep and tight in there. So this muscle when it's tight or when somebody's walking a lot, kind of that duck foot out, not saying he is, I can definitely see him walk around when I wasn't, you know, I was looking. He actually walks pretty good. So it's just odd that he's still getting this type of, um, muscle to be tight so we're going to do some muscle release here in a minute but we're still going to adjust and get some certain things moving as i looked in the examination earlier checking out his feet you can kind of see too they're a little bit off checking a few things so you can kind of see where this one's different length right so when i take him here i can see that I can come off his right heel and hit the left side so his pelvis has also shifted a little bit and we're going to work on getting him adjusted um, right now to fix some of that. So, nice. How's your neck and shoulder been? Um, right side of my neck's been a little funky. Yeah. Right Ooh. Yeah. You all corner pocket. Got some stuff going on right there too. So we know your pelvis has shifted that way. Go ahead and lay on your right side and face me if you would, please. Nice. Let's go to the other side. Yeah, 
move your leg up. Get right in here. Nice. Good. Snap, crackle, pop. Um, go ahead and lay on your back. One thing I like to do too while we're here is I'm going to get in and adjust kind of this hip because a lot of times this will be jammed up. So I'm just going to start with the whole kind of chain. Check out your ankle. Feel okay on your back? Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Like right there, or like in the cat, the top part right here, mm -hmm. it's always sore and super tight. So I don't know why that is. Just on the left side. Yeah. Not so having done legs. Yeah, right there. It's super tender. Yeah. So that's interesting. So he's kind of pointing to the part here that is the um, more the origin of the. Um, soleus muscle so it's kind of behind the knee sometimes people can think that they have a knee issue but the soleus muscle works on a bent knee which makes sense because he can't do a calf raise right now so his muscle is relatively contracted from the nerve impingement which is creating a just issue and why he's feeling this muscle doesn't want to do that um, that's why too probably he feels some hamstring tension but then as I bend the knee and try to do it that way with the bend, bent knee feel kind of funny Mm, it feels better. Yeah, Good. Yeah. yeah, so I'll show you a little kind of a way to stretch that as well. Any headaches or anything recently? How's the shoulder been? Um, rear delts are super tired. Like, and besides that, it's been a little fine. Just started cramping lately, I don't know why. Okay. Um, let's have you lay on your right side and face yes. Actually, I'm gonna stay right there. So with this exercise, you can scoot this leg back toward me. This Actually, both of them, yeah. Okay. Bring that one. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna help to kind of release some of this muscle in here. So what I'm going to have you do is you're going to take this leg and then you're going to drop it and try to bring it as forward and down as far as you can. Okay. So think of the idea that we're going to start with your piriformis like this and you're going to take your leg and drop and down. Okay. So we're going to start here. Good. So we're just basically contracting that piriformis. I'm going to put my fingers in and make sure that we're going to stretch it. So you're going to take that leg across. Yep. And then down as far as you can. Stretch the leg, straighten the leg out. Good. Come on back. So we're going to do five passes with this. Mm -hmm. Really digging into this piriformis. Go ahead. Keep the leg straight the whole time. And then, yep, and then take it all the way down. Good. And, there you go. So what I'm doing is we're just pinning the muscle down and he's actively stretching it. So there's a lot of different techniques that people use and name it. This is just one that I like to do to get some release in there. Good. Okay, final one. Awesome. Um, go ahead and sit up for me. Remember how to do this? Mm -hmm. Alright, go ahead. Oh, by the way. Oh, there you go. Go ahead. Perfect. Yeah, right there on the right side. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Definitely needs some muscle work. So, basically, what I would do, and what we're going to continue with him, is so we're going to end up adjusting his lower back. We're going to work on getting that piriformis relaxed, stretching his disc out, and, and mainly considered some other things such as dry needling, maybe some spinal decompression and such. So if you have a lower back problem, you feel like it might be a disc, you're not sure if it's a disc, but you got a real big pain in the butt back there, make sure you talk to a chiropractor, get it checked out, and then look for more videos as we continue to get Anton feeling better on his road recovery, feeling a lot better. Thanks for watching.